picture a wedding is of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we are so thankful for Madison and Tristan and their desire to make this covenant before you and before these witnesses. Father, I pray, pray blessings over their wedding today. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome on behalf of Madison and Tristan. It is my honor to greet you and welcome you to their wedding day. Everyone here is special to their hearts and in their lives, and they are honored that you have made the effort to be here and to share at this time of their covenant making. Madison and Tristan, you honor us today by allowing us the privilege to share in this most important time in your life. We join with you joyfully and prayerfully as you exchange your vows with one another. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? All right, y'all join hands and everybody be seated. Well, this day has been long in the making, been postponed due to a global pandemic, who would have guessed, right? And now today, two are becoming one flesh, as Genesis 2 poetically tells us. Tristan and Madison, you both add so much joy to those of us gathered here today, and we are blessed to take part in this time with you. And now it's that time of the ceremony where we take a step back and reflect on what we are doing here on this second date that you chose. In this venue you chose with all of your friends and family present. Madison and Tristan, I address this ultimately as a charge to you, but this is for everyone present here as well. You see, you did not have to get married like this. You didn't have to have a ceremony. There's nothing in the Bible that tells us to do such things. But by having a ceremony like this one, and as we talked about just a few short months ago, you both are making a point for everyone in this place. This marriage is based upon Jesus Christ and it is to be carried out in the midst of your friends and family. We are not only gathered here, friends and family, to watch a wedding, we are here to participate. Madison and Tristan, you aren't the only ones entering into a covenant today. Everyone in this room and outside here is entering into a covenant with you both to promise to support you, give you advice, pray for you, and watch you both grow into who God is shaping you to be. As Genesis 2 once again states, as two become one flesh. Friends and family, it is our responsibility to carry out these things for this awesome couple. Listen to what Ephesians 5, 22-33 says about marriage in light of Jesus. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself and Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Because we are members of his body, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become in flesh. This is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. What we see here is this. Jesus' love is the model for our marriages. As beautiful as it is, it also terrifies me as a husband, because Paul tells husbands that we are the one who models Jesus. So Tristan, good luck, brother. 1 Corinthians 13 tells us that love never fails. Never. No qualifications, no sometimes, no exceptions. Love simply never fails. And as much as we all hope and pray for the best for this marriage, here's the truth that you need to know, Madison and Tristan. You will fail one another. Tristan, you will inevitably leave the toilet seat up in the middle of the night. Madison, you will inevitably forget the clothes in the washing machine when Tristan needs that one shirt. But these are just minor failures. You will fail in much larger ways than this. Your love will never attain the perfection of Jesus' love. 
So what are you to do? What are we to do in light of this? Many to de decide in our world today that they can't answer this question and end up letting sin and brokenness overcome their marriage. What then is our hope in this fallen world? The better question is, who is our hope? Our hope becomes gloriously clear when we realize that Jesus is not only the pattern that we follow, but the constant reminder that his perfection is enough, not ours. He is the model that we strive after because he is the one who enabled this marriage. Why can you strive and exert yourselves for one another? It is because you both are the recipients of the greatest promise and the greatest love. You are the recipients of God's grace in Jesus Christ. Therefore, strive, fight, and run after Jesus, Madison and Tristan. Define your marriage by His work, His word, and His presence at the center of your marriage. He is the one who defines love. He defines your promises. He is your ability to love even when one of you inevitably fails. He knows that you have and will fall short. He is the one who keeps that flame burning when all else seems like loss. He is telling you both in spite of that to trust in His grace and depend on Him. Powerful, God-glorifying marriage knows its source, Jesus. So Tristan, in taking the woman that you now hold by the right hand to be your wife, you must promise to live together with her in a covenant of faith and of hope and in love according to the attention of God for your lives through Jesus Christ. You must promise to listen to her innermost thoughts and to be considerate and helpful in your support of her. You must promise to protect her and stand by her and through all the hard times as well as the good, never withholding your love from her, but promise to love her above all others and to accept full responsibility for her every need until death shall part you. Do you so promise? Now, Madison, in taking the man that you now hold by the right hand to be your husband, you must promise to live together with him in a covenant of faith, of hope, and of love according to the intention of God in your lives through Christ Jesus. You must promise to listen to his innermost thoughts, to be considerate and helpful in your support of him. You must promise to accept his protection and stand by him through all the hard times as well as the good, never withholding your love from him, but giving freely and gladly without any reservation. You must promise to love him above all others to accept full responsibility for his every need until death so shall part you. Do you so promise? Now, Tristan, will you repeat after me? I, Tristan, take you, Madison, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part according to God's holy ordinance and thereto I pledge myself to you and Madison likewise I Madison take you Tristan to be my wedded husband to have and to hold from this day forward for better for worse for richer for poor in sickness and in health to love and to cherish so death do us part, according to God's holy ordinance, and thereto I pledge myself to you. Can I have the rings, please? Thank you. In the spirit of love, you both will be signifying your relationship by exchanging rings. Rings are the outward visible sign of the invisible commitment you are making to the Lord Jesus and to one another. So Tristan, will you take Madison's ring and place it on the third finger of Madison's left hand? That's the right one. Good job. And repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of my vows. And with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Madison, likewise, will you place the ring on the third finger of Tristan's left hand and repeat after me? Good job. I give you this ring as a symbol of my vows. And with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The couple will now celebrate their new unity today by lighting a unity candle.
Now, Madison and Tristan, and as much as the two of you have followed Christ's leadership freely and deliberately, you have chosen to be partners in marriage in the sight and power and the strength of the Lord Jesus in these witnesses. As you have made your vows to the Lord and to one another, and have sealed these vows with the giving and receiving of rings, according to the power vested in me as an ordained minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no man separate. Tristan, you ready for this, man? <laughs> Tristan, you may now kiss your bride. I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Tristan Kirk. <laughs>